So there's always like a little bit of hope that one day I can make a video that says, I never thought I would see these guitars again. Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Well, I never thought I would ever see my guitars again, but yet here they are. So a lot has happened since I posted that Finding My Stolen Flying V story, and I just, I just can't help but think if I would have never clicked on that reverb listing and found out that that was my stolen guitar, none of this would have ever happened. To give you guys a brief rundown here, I was able to recover about half of my guitars. Because what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven guitars. I think there's about another six or seven that the guy's saying he's gonna ship to me. But I got these guitars through the help of somebody that actually works at the Gibson Custom Shop. His name is Dwayne, so huge shout out to him for helping me with this. I had quite a few people sending me links to the guy who has my Flying V on Facebook Marketplace. I actually gave him the okay to sell that guitar because he said he was gonna give me the money that I had back in it. And I felt bad that that guy got tied up and all this. I didn't want him to be out financially. So that guitar has sold. I'm really sad because that's like the one guitar that I really wanted back, especially since I'm doing that 70s Flying V review. Would have been nice to have compared it, but I'm not going to complain. I don't want anybody else to be hurt in this whole situation. But long story short, the guy actually came through. So I do have a good judge of character. I knew this guy eventually, with enough time, <laughs> would come through. He just had some serious health issues that I was able to confirm was real. So for today, let's take a look at these guitars that I have not seen anywhere between a year and a half to three years. Starting with this one. This was one of the guitars I wanted back more so than all the rest. And the reason for that is this is not my guitar. There were two other people that I had accidentally kind of sunk into this game. And about a year and a half ago, the other guy actually got his guitar back. It was in a little bit more completed status than this one, but I just felt so bad. I wanted to get this guitar back or at least have final closure that he wouldn't get it back so I could help replace this guitar for him. But essentially, this is uh, kind of an early to mid 70s Les Paul. Judging by the serial number, it originally had the Cluson waffle back styles. Everything had pretty much been replaced on this guy. It looks like even the pickups, there's some strange thing in the neck here. Looks like uh, some sort of cheap Epiphone pickup that has a bunch of steel wool on it. And then this was a, uh, a Seymour Duncan. The owner of this, he just wanted a Silver Burst Les Paul Custom. And since we were doing one of my other customs up like this, and I'm actually gonna meet up with him tomorrow morning to get this back to him. Jake was expecting to get this guitar looking just like this, but I thought I would pour some time into this to at least make it a playable instrument as soon as he opens the case. He doesn't seem like the type that's really gonna go through refinishing this guitar again, so I thought, eh, we might as well do this. It's just a, a good kind will gesture here. And in the end, it started to remind me of my Rhino Les Paul Custom, just without the great finish job. Hi Jake. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. It's nice to meet you. Finally nice to meet you. I bought those from you. Oh, did you? <laughs> I saw those there. It's like, well, that doesn't belong on this guitar. Right. Oh God. Oh Jesus. Yeah, it's poor I, thing. I'm thankful for that. Oh my God. <laughs> Man, I haven't... <laughs> it's been a long time. I, 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 I think, what was it? Two, two, two years, years ago? ago? Yeah. August of 17. That's my first Les Paul custom right here. Oh. <laughs> this is an old 70, 74. Sorry, when I bought lost. it, it was just natural. Someone already refinished it. I had it for probably about six months. Okay, so it's not like a family heirloom Right, no, no, no. My other Les Paul custom replaced this one. Because I was in high school when I had this. I had to sell my first Gibson Les Paul to buy it. Because I really wanted it just like super bad. That was a great reunion. If you want to check out his band, I'll put a link down in the description. But now let's go on to the guitars that were returned to me. I think it'd be great if I could work with like uh, 
an actual luthier, like a respectable shop if they want to, you know, get some advertising in for, you know, helping with that guitar. But let's take a look at this one. I have not seen this guitar in about three years. And honestly, I should have never sent this guitar in the first place. This was a Les Paul Deluxe, I believe. It had been routed for humbuckers and it was, it was a good guitar. I actually, when I first got it, it had EMG pickups in it. So I thought I could just, oh wait, no, sorry. <laughs> Wrong story. This is a one I have never actually seen. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get to that story somewhere else, I guess. So this is a Les Paul Custom that I purchased on Reverb. Actually, I think it was on eBay because I wanted to do that Uncle Milty signature guitar of James Hetfield. And we were initially doing it on a different Les Paul Custom, but it had the maple neck. And when I found this one at an appropriate price, it's another early to mid seventies one. I thought, why not? Why not actually do it with something a little bit closer to Milty specs? So here you can see where he's penciled out the UM73. He's got the buckle rash going. What was kind of unique about this one is it had somebody's license plate number scratched into it. That was just something you did. I think the social security number was uh, somewhere on this guitar. I think it was like right here. So he sanded that down. But other than that, I think this guitar was good. I don't think I'm up for these projects. I'm probably just going to sell them off as is, unfortunately. But hey, <laughs> I finally got to see this guitar. I think I paid like 2,500 bucks. Now I think I'm pushing it at 14, but somebody might want to restore this thing. Guitar number three. I, I don't remember what I sent them in a 90s case. Gotta stop starting my stories before I know what's in them. All right. What is in here? Looks like uh, another Les Paul Custom, potentially. Oh, no, no, this is the Deluxe. That's not too bad. So this is the one that had the EMG pickups. It had a nice cherry finish. What we were going to do was a Jimmy Page number three. So that guitar might look red, but I think it has like a gold undercoat and then red or something fancy. It's been a while since I've researched this one. But this was a sweet Les Paul Deluxe, you know, minus the whole EMG situation when I had it. It looks like he went ahead and filled in those holes, but I'm happy to actually see on this one that the back finish is still kind of intact. It looks like he left the neck alone, which I am definitely thankful for, but it looks like uh, I think he started sanding this. It was either that or it was naturally worn already. But the other crazy thing about this one is somebody actually extended the control plate. And when I bought this, I didn't realize it because it was still, you know, pretty much symmetrical. But it looks like, yeah, we still have the finish on the sides. I feel, well, what's that? Zero, zero, 007, that's kind of like BC Rich style. I wonder why that was put on there. Yeah, it looks like the, the frets could probably use some help on this example too. I think that's something else we were going to do was uh, refret it. But this one, this is not in too bad of shape. I'm not too disappointed about this. Maybe I could refinish this into something cool. And uh, all the original parts are supposed to be in here. So, I mean, they might look pretty rough without parts on them, but maybe we could do another day if you guys are interested where I just put all the stuff back. I think this is what, a 76 Deluxe? 77. Number four is in a chainsaw case. That's another nice feature is I sent these two chainsaw cases out because I was fairly new to shipping. I wanted to give them very substantial cases. So let's see what sleeps inside this generation two chainsaw case. It's probably the other Les Paul Custom. There we go. Okay, so, geez, what has he done to this? <laughs> oh, what has he done? So it appears he's taken the binding off of the side, so that's gonna need rebound. This has a lot of work that's gonna need done. But I got this one because somebody showed up to my house. I think I bought like three or four guitars from them. This was the original Uncle Milty guitar that we were going to do. Sure, it had the maple neck, but whatever. I had the guitar in hand. Wow, this thing is really rough. 
But once I found that other custom, we were going to Silver Burst this one because Silver Burst was just starting to get very popular. And nowadays, gee, Silver Burst is ridiculously popular. I mean, those Silver Burst customs, they are starting to reach astronomical prices. And it's all because that new Tool album that came out. And it doesn't even look like I have the, uh, the pickups in here anymore. That's a shame. Apparently he still has a whole big baggie of some of the parts for these guitars, so maybe I do have the original pickup somewhere. That one's kind of a, a sad sight to see. Yeah, I probably paid 2200 for that, so... <laughs> Any money I can recuperate out of this is just kind of a bonus at this point. It was just kind of, you know, being scammed out of all these guitars just didn't sit right with me. So it's nice that there's a, a slightly happy ending here. Now this is going to be a guitar that I've actually never seen before. An RD artist. So I think I paid 2000 for this because there was not a lot of RDs at the market at this time. And what I wanted him to do, he said he had a duplicator. So he was going to run this through his duplicator to completely duplicate this body so we could make RD style guitars. And that was mainly just to restore an RD that I had sent to him that we're going to potentially see here in a little bit. But what was wrong with this one is the back of the neck. Somebody had like sanded it all the way down. I got that one on reverb, so I should be able to show you photos right here. So I had this guy reshoot the back of the neck, which was probably a mistake. But since we had photos of it, so we can prove there's no headstock repair, I thought it'd be okay. It might make it easier to sell because it wasn't as ugly. This is kind of like a, a rough finish. Um, you're definitely going to want to do something with that to make it feel better. But what had taken this one so long to get back to me is he said he broke the Moog board. And I'm guessing it would be this pot right here. Yeah, he said it just came out. So if you remember correctly, I actually bought a Moog board and I, I've i kept it around for all this time just in case the thing ever came back. But I think this one would make an okay project for someone. I mean, it's got most of the original electronics. We've got the tuners in here and I'm sure the other pot shaft is in there as well. So I, I might be able to work with this one a little bit. I don't know if I'll do the review and demo on this one or not though. People have been wanting me to do an RD, but this is the reason why I never wanted to buy another one because it's like, ah, I'm not so good memories in this one. <laughs> and I was always hopeful it would come back to me, but that's, that's in a little bit worse shape than I thought it was going to be. But this one, ah, this silly little guitar. You know, it might be one of the least valuable ones, but it's the one I'm looking forward to almost the most to open this time. You guys know I love my amputee guitars. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't think he's ever even touched this one. But yes, he did not touch the finish. I'm very happy for that. I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to put some parts on it and I'm going to love it. <laughs> because it seems any restoration I do on these, you know, chopped up guitars, it just makes me feel sad at the end of the day. And the story behind this guitar is I drove up to Toledo. I had met somebody on a guitar forum and they were listing this thing for sale. I think I paid like 300 bucks. I still feel, you know, it's definitely worth 300. I mean, you could pop this neck off and put it on anything and have a real 70s Gibson maple neck on it. I think it's it's still realistically worth about 500 bucks. But again, the plan here was to restore this chunk and refinish this in a really sweet aged Pelham blue. So it'd be slightly green and then you would still have this naturally aged fretboard on it. It was just gonna look awesome. It looks like we have uh, all the parts yet still in here. What did I send him? Okay, it looks like I gave him Gibson USA pickups to put in here. So I'm super happy for this one to come back. I will probably make an episode just restoring this and playing it as is because it's just a doofy little guitar and I love my amputees. And then there was one. Now keep in mind, there's still about six or seven other guitars, but these are by far the most valuable ones. So I'm thankful that these have at least came back to me. 
I'm hopeful that the other projects will eventually be shipped back because there's like a really cool Dove, a Les Paul project body, believe it or not. <laughs> Somebody snapped the neck in half. So we are gonna restore that one to something. But this guitar is a guitar of legends. It's one of the great unsolved mysteries. <laughs> oh man, the worst mistake of my career. It's like you almost have to keep this guitar just because, you know, it's, it's a reminder. <laughs> You're only one step away from making a huge mistake. My fake slash snake pit. That's right, guys. We will get the full review and demo of the fake snake pit along with the full story of how PayPal really did me wrong on this guitar. It's the, the greatest mistake of my career, but I'm so happy to have it back. <laughs> Hopefully I can make it, you know, a better playable instrument because it really does look very similar to the real deal slash snake pit. So once again, huge shout out to Dwayne from the Gibson Custom Shop for helping me out with all this. I don't think I would have ever saw these guitars if it wasn't for him. As he drove up from Nashville just to drop these guitars off for me, that's, that's definitely above and beyond the call of duty. So I hope you guys enjoyed getting to see, you know, kind of a trip down memory lane of the stolen guitars that I never thought I'd see again. Hopefully there will be a part two to this very soon with the rest of the guitars. Maybe next week, maybe in a couple of weeks. But until then, thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.